Hi guys, Adam from Midwest Panel Builders, and uh, today we've got something exciting to show you. Garmin just released the version 9.30 software update for G3X Touch, and uh, there's a lot of improvements, and as always, there's more than we can talk about, uh, but we wanted to give you some of the highlights uh, that we really like and show you what that uh, looks like on the system uh, when they're being used. So real quick before we jump into it, I wanted to give you the bullet point items of uh, what's being updated. First of all, they have greatly expanded and improved the audio alerting on the system. Uh, the first one is if ESP, which is Electronic Stability Protection, engages, uh, you'll now get a tone letting you know that that had happened. So for example, um, if you're doing some stalls in your aircraft, practice for that, and your ESP is engaged, and you don't realize it's engaged, it kind of makes that whole stall thing a little weird because you're fighting the autopilot servos now as it's trying to protect you. So now with that tone in the headset, you'll know that that's happening uh, and it'll make you more aware of what's going on. Uh, additionally, certain cast items will now tone your headset uh, and speak to you. So things like RPM, oil pressure, oil temperature, uh, they also say that if you set up your flaps in a certain way, you can get that toned. So if, um, if you've seen our previous video about setting up the logic level discretes, uh, that should allow um, the flaps to warn you if you are over speed and that logic sets. Um, of course, we've got the new GHA-15 uh, radio, well, not radar altimeter, but they call it a radio AGL device that also is going to be on there and then they give you some more customization over the alert audio levels. So when you go into the G3X and you wanna, if you wanna set the volume of say the altitude alert tone to something a little bit different than for example, the traffic alerts, you can do that now uh, because some are inherently louder than the others. They also improve the AOA system a little bit. Uh, so first of all, anybody who's flown with the G3X and has heard the AOA knows that up to now, uh, as you approach a stall, you get a slow tone from the caution range, and as the tone gets faster uh, and eventually steady, that's your, your progression into a stall. Uh, so now what you can do is you can actually set that tone to start at the approach target. So for those who have it set up, there's a, a ball on the AOA indicator on the G3X, and so now when you're at the ball or greater of angle of attack, uh, that's when the tone will start. Um, there has been a couple of third-party products that do this. Uh, the fighter community calls it flying on speed. Um, so essentially that's kind of the, the idea. When you start hearing that slow beep, that means that you're on speed. Uh, additionally, with the AOA system, now you can have it be flap position aware. So if you have a flat position sensor plumbed into the GEA24, uh, you can set two calibration curves for angle of attack, one with and one without flaps, and then that way it's a little bit more accurate uh, regardless of your flight regime. As it is right now, you'd stall the aircraft with flaps and without flaps, and you go through the different flap ranges, and then it just gives you the most conservative stall warning of the whole thing. Uh, but now, like I said, it'll be a little bit more accurate to where if it warned you a little too early, typically speaking, now it's going to be right on time. Next, they have modified the logic levels a little bit. So now, instead of doing it to where it's just indicated airspeed or just barrel altitude, you can set those up so where, to where you can do true airspeed or Mach number, or you can do AGL or pressure altitude uh, if you have those constraints set for your logic levels. Finally, uh, they have modified just a little bit the EIS display. So now we can actually get a little bit more compact on the tack and manifold pressure and allow an extra data PID to show up on the uh, EIS bar and uh, we'll show you kind of what that looks like. Okay, so here we are in config mode on the G3X. Let's jump right into this. So first I'm gonna show you the new sound settings. So if we go to sound and we go, so you can see we've got a new miscompare alert that we can uh, enable or disable. So miscompare is if the G3X and G5, or if you have multiple GSU-25s in the G3X system, if they don't agree, this miscompare alert will tone in your headset and it'll just say the word miscompare. Just brings your attention to it. Uh, further along, you can see now that we have more volumes available uh, for certain things. And then we have the new AOA alert mode, which is uh, stall awareness or approach plus stall awareness. So that's it for sound configuration. I'll show you real quick as well. If we go over to LRU, we've got the new option for radio AGL sensor. So that's the GHA 15 height advisor. Let's go back to 
the AOA setup, if we go here, you can see that we have a flaps up and flaps down calibration. Of course, we first have to do the flaps up calibration before flaps down is uh, enabled. And then um, these settings here were the same, but this is where you can disable or enable AOA above and below certain airspeeds so you don't get nuisance alerts. Okay, let's take a quick look at the logic signals. So I do have one set up on the flaps. So if I go to engine and airframe and go to settings, go to logic signals and set by flaps, this is similar to what we've done before, but now you can see that this area has changed. So now I can click on this and it can be indicated true or mock for the airspeed. And then on altitude, I can do AGL, density, altitude, pressure, altitude, or barometric altitude. Another thing that's new is actually on the discrete inputs, you can also now have them set or require logic signal set on the, uh, on the system. So for example, maybe you don't want the canopy open alert to come on, like if you're an RV10 customer, for example, unless you're above a certain engine RPM or uh, throttle setting. It already could do that if you had manifold pressure and RPM, uh, but maybe you have a fixed pitch prop and it doesn't know what your power setting is necessarily. Now you can just manually do that. Or if you don't like the way that the G3X did it before, you can set your own manual stuff there. So that's kind of cool. It gives you some more flexibility. Now we can go back to a pilot mode and show you what some of this looks like. Okay, so here we are in uh, pilot mode. And uh, the first thing I'll show is the new way that you can display the um, EIS page. So if we go menu, menu, setup, display, this option here, PFD EIS engine page layout, if we set that to separate, you'll notice that the manifold pressure and RPM are now combined and a little bit more densely packed. Uh, but what you can see happen is it opened up another data block for us. So we've got uh, amps that came in to the equation uh, by doing that. One thing that we ran into, and I'm not sure if this is a bug or not, but if you set your fuel quantity to be text only instead of the bar graph, then it nullifies this for whatever reason and sets it to the, to the split gauges with the full range. So I'm not sure again if that's a bug or not, but keep that in mind. The next thing we will demonstrate is the AGL. So I've got my demo mode paused here, but what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm going to drive the sim, I'm going to unpause, and I'm just going to stop my turn and set my heading to whatever's present. And then I'm going to set my altitude to about, well, we're at 4,700 feet. So that means that we have uh, uh, MSL on the ground about 300. So we'll go to 1,000 and then I'll set my simulator altitude to 1,000 here as well. And then you can see we've got this new AGL readout coming up here. And then now we can actually watch that AGL readout decrease as we get closer to terrain. And then I'll show you something cool that happens on the altimeter bar when we get to that point. And you can see that we've got, you know, about 200 feet here. So within 200 feet, we should see the hashed lines that the radar altimeters typically would put on a tape. And there it is. So that's the ground level. And you can see it's obviously very rapidly coming in. That's just kind of a cool little readout there. Of course, you know, we have like the data bar up here that can always be AGL, but this one you can have show or hide at any point. And then uh, it's just kind of a handy little readout there as you're going through the pattern. A couple other things I'll show you real quick that I didn't mention earlier is some new things that we have as far as being able to see system information from pilot mode. Uh, so anybody who's familiar in uh, config mode uh, the first button that would be over here is system information. You can see the status of all the different LRUs. Uh, and maybe if they're updating, you could see update status in there. So our advice has always been up to this point, when you do a software update on the G3X display, go into config mode immediately after the software update so you can see what the rest of your LRUs are doing. So now we've got the ability to do that here in pilot mode. So menu, menu, tools, and we've got the system information. And now you can see that we've got information items here. A lot of these are blank or X because we don't have the physical items. We're just simulating them in demo mode, but um, in your aircraft, you know, anything that you have in theory would be visible here. What's cool is this will come up automatically immediately following a software update of the GDU 460 or any of the GDUs for that matter. So then immediately you have the software update information. So you can see, for example, if the G5 is updating, 
um, you can click into it and then you can see the update percentage as it's going through and then just kind of watch everything as it happens. Um, one reason this might be useful is, for example, you'll get the message down here that says software update in progress, do not turn off. You may not know what's happening because everything's going on behind the scenes to like the autopilot servos or the GMC 507. So you really have no way of knowing what's happening. So this is a way that you know how far along the update is. And then if something fails to update, you'll see it in here as well so that you can address whatever that problem might be like CAN bus, for example. Thanks for watching this brief overview of the G3X system software 9.30 update. We didn't cover everything uh, in this video of all the different change notes. There are some specific niche items in there. For example, there's a fix for the uh, flap system that applies to Sling aircraft that we're actually making a separate video to cover. So watch out for that if you are a Sling customer. Uh, if you have any questions about anything that you have seen in this update uh, or anything else about the G3X system, please feel free to leave a comment and we'll be happy to either answer or to make a video on it if it warrants it. Um, some one question that I'll just get out of the way right now that I know will be asked is, should you update now given um, some updates in the past that have gotten released that had to get pulled? In our, you know, frankly limited testing that we've been able to do on this and a couple other systems, we personally have not seen any bugs that would make us apprehensive of doing this update. If you do find that you have to backdate for some reason, it's very easy to do on the system. Just keep in mind though that when you do that, your user settings get cleared. User settings are gonna be things like map setup or data bar setup or things like that. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.